Hey guys, it's Kay. So if you've bought a new Android TV or you've got an existing Android TV, this guide is going to be for you. Because what I'm going to do is go through how to set up your TV by decluttering the home screen and removing all the bloatware. And this also includes any ad targeting settings you may have on your TV. Because by default, these TVs come with a lot of settings that slow down the performance of the TV by increasing the processing load on it. And over time, it can just basically grind to a halt. And by the way, if you do find this video helpful, please do give it a like and please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps a whole lot. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. So as you can see, my home screen on my TV has got a lot of clutter on it from a lot of apps. But don't worry, we're going to clean this up. Now at the bottom of your home screen, you're going to get this window which says customize your home screen. Just select it and you'll get the following window pop up. So first things first, make sure this play next is turned off as it just adds unnecessary clutter to the home screen. And the next option is pretty straightforward, just select which channels you want to appear on your home screen. Now some of these channels or apps have sub menus, so make sure you go inside and select what you want. Now if you look at Haystack News for example, it's got 12 channels included in the app. It is great that they offer this amount of choice, it allows you to filter what you want to see. So after you've done that, if you go back to the home screen, you'll see it's looking a lot cleaner and leaner. A pleasure to navigate through as it's only got the content you want to see on it. Now you can take this down to as far as you want, as you can see here I've taken it down to just two rows. Okay, so once you've got your home screen organized, the next thing you can do is organize what you've got on your home screen. Just long press on the icon app and you'll get the following menu. Select move and then you can move it to where you want. So move your most frequently used apps to the beginning of the shelf. So this will definitely save you some valuable time when you're looking for your favorite apps. Now while we're here, we can also add our favorite apps to this top shelf. Simply click on the plus sign and you'll get the following sub menu. And you just select the apps you want on your top shelf from here. So there you go, your top most favourite apps at your fingertips. Now if you want even quicker access to your apps, there is a way to do this. And you can switch between apps on the go. You can actually add the apps to your input menu. Just select inputs on your remote control and scroll along to the end to the edit button. And you'll notice you'll see options to add apps. So here if I scroll along to the end, you can see all the apps that are available to switch between on the go. Or you can just choose to select the most recent apps you've used, which will automatically add the most recent apps you've used to the input menu. So now if I go to my inputs, you'll see I've got Netflix, YouTube, Apple TV. And if I'm on my home screen, I can click on the inputs menu and I can instantly go to that app. It'll definitely save you some time and it gives you the ability to switch apps on the go. And it's only limited by the number of apps you've got installed on your device. And I find it particularly handy if I want to do a quick search on the internet. I can quickly select the browser and go straight into browsing. Okay guys, this next one, did you know that you can organize your quick settings menu? And you might be asking, what's that quick settings menu? Well, it's the menu that pops up when you press the cog button on your remote control. Just scroll all the way across and select edit. And from here, you can tick on and off which menu options you want appearing in the option menu. So as you can see here, I'm decluttering a bit and taking off most of the menu options, which I'm not going to be using. And once you've done that, you can see the quick menu button is a lot more easier to navigate as there's a lot less clutter and you're able to get your settings game on par. Okay, so this next setting is a pet favourite of mine and it's getting rid of that annoying system sound. You know that pinging sound it makes when you're scrolling across the home screen or settings. It's a real easy one to fix, just head on over to the settings cog and go into your menu, scroll down to device preferences and again scroll down to sound and you'll see the option for system sounds and you can just basically toggle it off from here. Now this next one is definitely a great option to have and it's personalising the TV button on your remote control. So by default, the TV button will take you to your TV input, but you can actually change what it does when you press it. And you can do this by going into settings, clicking on watching TV, scrolling down to TV button shortcut. And there you'll see all the options you've got. And it's basically all your HDMI inputs. So you can easily access your gaming system, your satellite system, etc. All with one touch of the button. So currently I've got it set to digital TV. And if I press it, it's going to bring up that channel straight away. Now this next setting is definitely a smart one to use. It's the auto picture mode. And to turn it on, go into settings, scroll down to display and sound, select the first option, which is picture, scroll down until you get to auto picture mode and turn it on. So what this mode actually does is automatically sets the picture mode based on the content from your HDMI device. So let's say you've connected your PS5 or your Xbox X. This mode will automatically detect that and it will set your TV settings to the game mode, which means you're going to get a higher refresh rate, more frames per second and a smooth gaming experience. Okay, so this next setting is going to unlock the full potential of your TV. And this is getting access to the developer options. 
And you might be asking, what are developer options? Well, these are advanced settings that allow you to access features that are not available in the standard user interface. Now, these options are intended for advanced users or developers or people who want to customize or optimize their device. So disclaimer here, guys, it is important to note that using the developer options can be risky and could cause issues with your device. Therefore, it's only recommended you use them if you know what you're doing and are comfortable with the risks involved. So getting developer options is quite straightforward. Go into settings, scroll all the way down to device preferences, click on about and then scroll all the way down to the bottom where you'll find build. And if you click on this up to about seven or eight times, you'll get the following message pop up telling you that you're end steps away from being a developer. And finally, you'll get the message you are now a developer. And now the games begin guys. If we go back to the previous menu and scroll down, you'll find we've got a new menu option and it's called developer options. Now, of course, there's a bunch of things you could change here, guys, but you've got to be careful. But if you scroll down, one of the things you might be interested in changing is the USB configuration. So this setting controls what happens when you connect a USB device to the TV. By default, it's set to MTP, which is Media Transfer Protocol, and this will basically just start transferring files across from your device. So great for connecting hard disks or phones, but you do have options like charging, audio source, and USB Ethernet. Pretty cool. Now another setting you can actually change here will make your TV more responsive and faster. So what you need to do to enable this is to scroll down and find these three settings. Windows Animation Scale, Transition Animation Scale and Animated Duration Scale. So pop into the first one and you'll see the following options. Now what we want to do is turn the animation mode to 0.5 times. And what that does is actually affects the time it takes the menu to pop up on your screen when you press the button on your remote control. And we're going to come out and do the same for transition animation scale, change it to 0.5 times. And lastly, animated duration scale, 0.5 times. And now straight away you should notice that these menus are popping up more zippily and faster. Now guys, if you are finding this video helpful, please do give it a like and please do consider subscribing. It really helps me out. Now taking a look further down this menu, we can see there's a lot more options. And the next setting I would probably consider changing is in the app section and it's the background process limit. So of course this setting controls the number of processes that are allowed to run in the background. And we all know that the more processes that are running in the background, the slower our system runs. So I'm going to change this to two processes running in the background, which will ensure that the TV's processor never gets overloaded and bogged down. And therefore ensuring your TV is always running at maximum capacity. Now let's say you want to remove these developer options because you don't want the kids having access to them and messing up your TV. Just simply go back into the developer options menu and the first thing you're going to see is a toggle switch for enable developer options. Just toggle it off and if by magic that developer menu option disappears. As you can see it's no longer there under device preferences. Okay this next tip is pretty cool. Now we all know that installing apps on your TV can be a bit of a pain because the OS can be a bit clunky and clumsy. So why not just bypass that hassle and install it directly from your phone, PC or tablet. Simply open up a browser on your phone or tablet and head on over to Google Play. And as long as you're signed in using the same username on your TV and on the web browser, you should see an option for installing apps onto your TV. So let's say I want to install this app here. I just click on install and this window will pop up. Click on choose device and you should see your TV there. And that's it guys, simple as that. Next time you log into your TV, you should see the app installed on it. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy this next video. 